bike came all the way from Berlin. <laughs> um, and he's going to talk about the CARP programming language. Um, another thing you might like to know is that he has a reasonably extensive blog, which I like to read uh, when I can. I want to talk about CARP, a language for the 21st century. Um, quick disclaimer, I work as a standard library maintainer um, for CARP as a volunteer, of course. So I'm affiliated with the project. I have a horse in this game. And I also started with a bold claim, namely that CARP is a language for the 21st century. You can't read that, can you? But um, that's what I just said. Um, and I'm not going to uh, believe that you blindly believe me, so I'm going to try and give you the facts and see whether you believe me afterwards. Um, first, what is CARP? CARP is a compiled Lisp without a garbage collector. Um, it has strong and simple C interop, and its syntax is inspired by Clojure. It has a bunch of more things, but that is basically the gist so that everyone knows maybe what they're looking at. If you don't know a bunch of concepts that I'm going to name drop, that's completely fine. Um, why was this language created? So uh, Eric, the uh, creator of the language, is a game dev, and that puts everything into perspective. Um, he wanted a Lisp, and he created one. But uh, traditionally, Lisps always have garbage collection. And that's bad for games, because we need hard real time. It's also bad for basically every, um, every application where we need to know when something's happening. Because in a garbage collected language, it can happen that randomly your garbage collector kicks in, and you pause. The world just stops. And you can't have that in a game where you have to have a certain amount of frames per second so that it seems smooth. Um, lists are also dynamically typed. I'm not a static typing zealot. I don't care whether you use types or not, but it's a trade-off. And if you don't have types, it's hard to compile a language efficiently. You can do it. So common Lisp, for instance, um, traditionally does things like multi-dispatch or, or like tag pointers, void pointers, where you look at the tag and then you know what type it is and then you cast it. And that's all possible, but it's all terrible. And uh, it generates avoidable runtime errors. And you have all of this overhead just that so that your user doesn't have to write types, right? So this is the Lisp ecosystem uh, situation. And there are other languages that came in that solved these problems, like the first one being Haskell. It has a Hindley-Milner typing system. If you don't know what that means, it basically just means that um, we have, first of all, uh, a very expressive type system that is very relatively complicated, but it's extremely powerful. And also, there, it ships with an algorithm that infers those types for you. So in most cases, you don't have to write types or type annotations in Haskell. It just, the compiler figures it out. And that's what you really want. You want a system that does the, uh, st the parts that are annoying for you. Because writing types is mostly something that, I mean, it's manual. You look at the thing, you know whether it works on integers or not most of the time. And so it's definitely a solvable problem. And Haskell has mostly solved it. And then you have Rust on the other side of the equation. They do away with garbage collection. How do they do that? They have ownership and borrowing semantics. Ownership and borrowing, basically, through that, you just know when something is needed, it's, it's created. And when something's not needed anymore, it's deleted. And you know that because you know who owns what at any point in time and where it's moving. And once it reaches the end, so no one owns it anymore, you insert a deleter for that object. And you can actually statically at compilation time find that out. And then it's basically as if you're writing C because it just not with the manual memory allocation, right? So, but there are a bunch of problems with that. Namely that both of these only solve one of them. Haskell has garbage collection and Rust has explicit typing. It has type inference for variables, but that's kind of boring because the really complex types are usually function types, especially if you have like higher order functions that take in other functions that everything blows up and it's super annoying to look at. So enter CARP. CARP has Hindley Milner types, it has ownership and borrowing semantics, and it's a powerful Lisp. It has a powerful Lisp macro system on top. 
if you've never written a Lisp macro, I do envy you because it's not great, but <laughs> you can do amazing things with it. You can write your own um, uh, definitions, uh, as in things that create definitions. You can write your own control uh, structures, all kinds of crazy things, and you can compute things at compile time. But um, let's look at some code because I don't have that much time left, left I feel, and I've not uh, gave you a glimpse of the language. So this is the simplest of, not the simplest of programs, but it's very simple. We define x to be one, def is the keyword for defining variables. We define the function main, which is the entry point of any program that uh, runs uh, as an executable, doesn't take any arguments, um, and then we print the string um, of the addition x and 10. So it will print a line that just says 11. IO is a namespace, by the way. So we have that. All right. But what about some real code? Because that was just nothing. Um, and that's where a micro framework that I wrote comes in. Um, because I like, pro I like processing and P5GS, but I wanted something like that for Anima, so I wrote it. Um, it's SDL-based. It uses the C bindings and a bit of macro magic to work. It's inspired by processing um, and thus has a setup function, setup function bindings and draw function bindings. So you set up your program once, and then every frame draw is going to get called. And it's super lightweight. It's 111 lines of code if you remove the documentation, the doc strings. OK, so demo time. What we're going to create right now is this. Uh, if it compiles, yes. So this. It's a little generative art piece. I sometimes moonlight as a generative artist. Um, and what we're going to start with is this. We load anima. We use the namespace anima so don't, we don't have to type so much. We define size to be 800, and we define two empty functions, setup and draw, that both take in a render and do nothing. And then we say def sketch, that's a macro, with the title enthusiastic on 2018, with width and height both set to size and the setup and draw function. OK, so now I can run this. That's a little bit of uh, vim. OK, we have an empty screen. So how about we make the background gray, right? Oops. How about we make the background gray? Uh, 90, that's then a grayscale from 0 to 255. Um, so that's a little lighter. It's gray. Um, but that's not nice. So we're going to go back to there. I'm not a great typer, so that makes this uh, a bit uh, unpleasant to watch, but who cares? So we're also going to set the color to another grayscale value, namely white. And then, because we wanted to make a bunch of lines, we're going to create 300 of them with for loop. And then let x be ran. That, that's an anima function, random. Um, zero to, let's say, uh, size. And 11, and size. And because we want to make a line, we are going to call line with x and y. And because we had this nice thing that went from the origin to the end of, so this line in the middle that we could see, we need a p point on the origin to end the line uh, uh, in the middle. And that's going to be x and x. If both coordinates are the same, you're on a line in the middle, right? So if we run this, what we're going to get is this. It's a bit too fast, and so we're going to set the frame rate to 1. Uh, and we can do that in the setup function. And we've created our artwork. And what I just did was create a statically compiled executable that uh, doesn't need garbage collection. It's going to call the draw function exactly once a second because it knows when to do that and there are no pauses. I didn't have to write any type types, but it's statically typed. And it took me a whole eight lines of code. Thank you. <laughs>